ARBs. Uh, the early ARBs, there are two models. The RDO3, that's a 10-spline ARB, i.e. it takes a 10-spline shaft. And an RD56, uh, that is a 24-spline ARB. They're pretty much the same. Uh, the way to actually identify them are these sort of end flanges and the fact that the copper pipe doesn't run over the top of the crown wheel. Um, the early RD03s and RD56s are um, previously on videos we've shown that they have a plastic centre cage. Uh, these do break but in actual general terms in many ways the earlier ones are a little bit better than the later ones because the later ones have an even worse air system and also uh, they suffer from some idiot redesigning them so that the copper pipe uh, goes over the top of the crown wheel um, which means if the copper pipe touches the crown wheel it will chop it in half and you're into some serious money to repair it. However, one of the big Achilles heels on the RD03s and the RD56s is this end flange. Now this one is a knackered RD56 this is a knackered uh, RD03. In fact, I'll show you it's knackered. Um, hello, Sam. That's your little toy that's in bits. Now, this is an RD03, 10 spline. And if I put it on there, you'll see that the actual uh, journal for the bearing is a different size. Um, now, this is a casting. Um, and as a casting, it's quite a weak unit. So, to tear this off the end is quite common. Um, equally, um, if you look at this, you'll see that uh, it's actually quite easy for it to have lumps torn out of it. And part of the reason is that it is extremely thin where it bolts through um, with the crown wheel bolts to the crown wheel. Uh, they also have a tendency to uh, flex and tear the centres out because it's really not a very strong unit. And this is a combination of poor quality forging and uh, age related wear. Uh, the other very common fault with an ARB is you can just lift the bearing off um, because when the wear happens, you can see here some, maybe you can see here, maybe you can't, someone has uh, gone around this with a centre punch trying to make it a rough finish so that the bearing fits. Um, unfortunately, uh, that's a fail. Um, now, for the RDO 3s, which is the 10 spline, um, that flange is no longer available. So that means simply if you break it, damage it, uh, get oval holes, uh, do whatever, your ARB is scrap. The RD56s, you can buy them, they're around about £90. Um, they're still made out of cottage cheese, uh, probably looking at a six week wait from Australia and they're no stronger than uh, the original. So I have decided to build a replacement unit. This is the XS um, RD56 and RD03 uh, CNC machined out of proper hard metal, heat treated, ready to fit um, end plate. And these have been made cunningly so that you can actually fit them to either the 10 spline or the 24 spline unit. Um, everything is radius so that it's a lot stronger, the actual unit itself is solid and where it actually bolts through, there are some pictures, but where the crown wheel actually bolts through um, you're looking at twice as much metal and it's a proper, proper um, high quality EN24 um, metal which is heat treated and frankly you know these are not going to wear out. Uh, these have been made smaller so that the bolts are a snug fit, the holes have been made smaller so the bolts are a tighter fit and just generally everything's been beefed up and made out of a higher quality metal. So the rest of this video is actually showing you one being built onto a early RD03 um, which that sad case came off. Um, and this is nothing unusual, this is fairly typical of a uh, very worn, very tired end flange. The rest of the diff is perfectly serviceable, um, but being an RD03 you couldn't get that part so the diff was scrap. So we'll now look at actually fitting the new unit to one of those differentials. These are available off our website. Um, there is no difference between the RD56 or the RD03. We've made it so it fits both models. question we get asked a lot is what exactly do you do when you rebuild a diff? 
um, not as in the technical process of it because we've done a few videos on that but more as to typically um, all the components and what goes in there now this is a 10 spline um, ARB um, this was actually owned by Sam Merrill and unfortunately he broke the end flange which is quite common um, and the end flanges are no longer available from ARB um, I bought it off him um, as much as anything as scrap because it was unusable, unfixable um, and then decided to make the uh, Megasquirt XS end flanges so this one can now live again so we start off with a casing. Uh, this casing is going to look a little bit different by the time it actually starts getting built. But we obviously take casings in. Uh, we put them in our jig. Uh, the jig tells us um, whether these towers here have flexed um, or whether or not it's still actually in position. Um, these towers actually bend when uh, diffs explode. There's quite a lot of force even when a two pin lets go. So these cases are first checked for alignment. Uh, if they pass that test they then go off to uh, a cleaning company. They put them through an industrial cleaning tank. That takes most of the oil and uh, sludge away um, and then they put it through a blasting process which is when we get it back now this one I've had in stock for quite a long time um, and that's because it's an imperial case and uh, we don't use many of them but on a 10 spline diff um, because it could be fitted to either um, an early 90 or Range Rover with 10 spline axles or it could be fitted to a series vehicle and on those you've got to be careful that you don't end up with the envial position of not being able to get oil into the uh, axle because on uh, some vehicles the oil filler is in the diff pan and on the early imperial uh, axles like series a lot of them are in the actual casing um, and yours truly many years ago did fit a metric casing to a series vehicle and then Fanny couldn't get any oil in the axle. Brilliant. So this one we're using because it's got this uh, filler here um, and this will be um, further cleaned um, quite heavily. It will be uh, repainted once again because the coating on it is just really to save it going rusty and it will be um, fettled up. We'll also be uh, having to supply a crown wheel and pinion. So on this one, um, this is quite a late uh, 3.54 crown wheel and pinion that came off a good diff been checked it's okay um, and that will be cleaned up and you almost won't recognize it uh, the other thing on the uh, imperial casings going back to them they have these very unusual bolts um, this is one of the giveaways for a metric casing they have these huge headed uh, bolts and they have this filler plug uh, these huge headed bolts look immensely strong uh, they're actually like cottage cheese so these will be replaced with a 12.9 ton equivalent uh, on the bearing at the bottom here, it's going to have a new pinion bearing, uh, that will be one of these, we use only Timkin every time, and it will also need a head bearing which goes up here. Uh, so it will have a, tail, a head bearing and a tail bearing and a shim, and then on the top here it will have uh, a new nylock, we don't bother using old ones, new washer, and we also use uh, new spacers. Um, the problem with spacers is they do actually take quite a hammering, quite often they've got score marks and damage on them, um, so we use uh, brand spanky new ones that we carry in stock and these go into all our builds. So that will go on the pinion as well. The crown wheel will then get assembled onto the ARB, um, we use a genuine Land Rover FTC 5051 flange head bolts, uh, these are rated at 12.9 tonnes and the standard bolts, uh, these don't have a washer, they're a once use bolt and you'll probably see these serrations there and these make a very good um, fixing. So there's 10 of those going in. We will also be replacing, and we do on most of our rebuilds because these flanges uh, are normally uh, shot to bits. This is where the seal fits, if this seal leaks it leaks oil. So we fit um, OEM um, splines, this is a 24 spline one designed to fit on here. Um, and that is brand spanking new and we will also be fitting to that uh, a genuine Land Rover Wolf Dust Shield these are far superior to the early saucer these get right in and protect the seal uh, the seal we were putting on is a Cortico uh, Cortico seals are frankly pretty much the best you can get um, they're a double lip seal and they are I believe a uh, genuine Land Rover they're just not in the Land Rover box um, we've already done um, a new cage 
on the ARB itself. Um, the gears have all been built up, the cage has been put in with new springs, um, and that is ready basically to be bolted together. We've thrown away the ring of bolts that uh, hold the uh, flange here to this flange here, centerpiece, and these are being replaced by 12.9 tonne bolts instead of the nasty uh, cottage cheese ARB ones that uh, tend to shear off. Uh, the um, air system here will be cleaned up a bit further and there are two new ARB genuine seals to go in there which are a ridiculous amount of money. Um, that's the end gear that's got to be built into the casing. Here we have our um, STC 2726 bearing pressed onto the housing. This will also have a new uh, piston seal arrangement which goes on the other side of this put in. And then this is the Megasquirt end flange. Uh, with an RTC 3095 bearing um, and the adjuster shim here uh, will go on both of these to allow it to go into an imperial casing. Uh, these are the original adjuster rings, these will be cleaned up a bit more and used as a final fitting. And that basically is everything that will be going into this build. There are a few minor pieces as well. On the ARB it has a special uh, outward adjuster ring that will replace one of these. Um, it also has a couple of uh, cotter pins for the ears for the casing, a couple of ears itself and then a locking ring for the air system and uh, we'll be putting some brand new uh, Allen head screws that uh, hold this unit into place. Time for a little bit of an anorak outing. This is a RD03 uh, ARB adjuster. This goes around the air system and then the air system locks into here. Now just to give you an idea, this is a, a standard metric casing adjuster ring and as you can see when I put them together they are not the same size um, and that's because the uh, adjuster rings for these are bigger um, on a, a metric casing so you can't mix and match. You've got to be very careful when you start playing with imperial casings and uh, metric centers. And now with the flange fitted and a new Timkin bearing we're just going to press the new bearing uh, on to the flange nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. Release. So there's the new replacement flange with a Timkin RTC 3095 pressed on very nicely. Now on this one, uh, this is a 10 spline ARB, so uh, this has a different uh, bearing on the other side, just settling in there, rotating the bearing to make sure it doesn't catch on the race as it goes in. This is an STC 2726, which has a different internal diameter and is only used on the 10 spline ARBs. That's that one on, just release that. As you can see we've got a bundle of special tools to make sure we don't wreck stuff because uh, these bearings are really quite expensive and that comes off there. So there's now the other bearing on. Now this is being built into uh, an imperial casing. Uh, the difference with the imperial casings is that uh, this size here uh, is designed for a metric casing. Imperial casings are quite different. Um, main distinguishing features are different carrier bolt heads and the other big giveaway is having a filler plug on it. But what you actually can do is get these special ground adapters um, and if that goes on top of that, um, that now can all be bolted together and fitted to a um, imperial casing. So there we have it. We have one uh, flange for the air system and one flange from the Megasquirt excess range and that's all going to go together on a 10 spline locker in an imperial casing. Sometime later and back with the casing this has now had uh, another cleaning session it's been repainted and we've also drilled the hole for the ARB to go in. Um, there's the filler plug for the filler and we've got a uh, decent filler plug to go in. As a matter of curiosity if you wanted to which would be a very good idea you could actually put a X-Engineering X-plug in there to catch any magnetic swarf as well as the bottom of the axle. So that casing will be uh, cleaned once more when it comes to final fitting but for test fitting that will do for the moment. Going across to the actual unit itself that's now been um, cleaned up and fitted. This has now got the um, RTC 3095 and a carrier and then the shim will go on top of that to convert to allow this to go into an imperial casing and the same 
uh, with the other end and the shim to go on the bottom. Um, that has also now been rebuilt and as you can see we've put uh, some 12.9 ton bolts in there instead of the rather uh, cottage cheesy ones that come as standard. This has all been stripped and put back together and tested on our rig and it locks and unlocks very nicely actually for a, a unit of its age and a good uh, crown wheel and pinion. So we're actually now ready for this to go test fitting. Uh, in the background is a ARB uh, that we've just bought um, which is also going to be uh, lovingly restored and put back to a better condition than we found it in. But back to this and we'll carry on with the build. These are the FTC uh, 5150 heavy duty 12.9 ton uh, carrier clamps and these have really gone on the here here. It fits particularly well. I'm very pleased with the machining that's been done. And inside the bottom here, where the piston actuator is, that has a new um, ARB genuine piston seal fitted, along with a new cage. On this particular video, it's a perfect opportunity to demonstrate the uh, issues of uh, pinion height. Uh, we've got the pinion in a uh, test bearing with the original shim that came out of this casing. This, this shim fits between the casing and the bottom of the head bearing. This is a very expensive height block and what you can actually see hopefully is that the shim with this pinion is actually far too high. Um, now what you have to do is go through a selection of shims uh, which we have here. Um, these shims pretty much all vary uh, in thicknesses. There are a vast range of them. Uh, they are hideously expensive. And uh, as you can see here, I've actually done the calculations uh, with what's in there and a feeler gauge and a calculator and a very nice digital measurer. We need a shim that is 1.717 millimeters. Not 1.7, 1.717. And that, if we then swap it around, take that out, take that out, remove pinion remove carrier there's the shim that's in there so that shim is too fat here's the shim that I've done the calculations on that shim sits in there carrier bearing goes back in pinion goes back in height block goes back on and when you put that in there if you've done your calculations right it's absolutely spot on. There should be either nothing or the tiniest, tiniest amount of light uh, showing under here. And uh, some considerable time later, it's now fully rebuilt. Um, now, earlier on in the video, you'll see that I showed you these. Um, these are actually a GKN T-grade bolts, which are very, very, very low grade. Um, standard bolt is 8.8 .8 ton, it's less than that. Um, so to give you an idea of the money that's been spent on uh, this uh, diff alone, uh, it has these in which are uh, 7 16ths of BSF 2 and a quarter inch 12.9 ton bolts, fitted there. Uh, and I bought enough to do three diffs which was 40 quid. So they are seriously expensive bolts. So you've got four 12.9 upgraded carrier bolts, you've got 10 FTC 5150s, you've got brand new XS Mega Squirt N flange, uh, you've got a new piston seal in there, you've got new air seals on there, you've got carrier bearings brand new Timkin, head bearing brand new Timkin, and down here you've got refurbished cache obviously and then you've got a brand new uh, flange, pinion seal, wolf dust shield, tail race head bearing. Um, pretty much everything that can be replaced on this has been um, you can definitely find a cheaper RD03 uh, differential, but I honestly doubt you'll find a better one for the money. So if you've got 10 spline and you want differential, uh, this one will probably be sold by the time you're watching this video, but it will be on the website, up for sale, very shortly. Hope you find that of interest. Bye for now.